Come on. 6.30? Come on. Let's get a halt down. Let's get a halt down. Halting down. Halting down. Covered some into the halt down. 6.13. That's what I call a home run. All right, everyone. Good morning. Today is February 9, 9.04 a.m. So let's talk about the market lately. So we are currently in a Chinese theme. That means that any stock that has any sort of Chinese uh, entity or anything that has to do with China is running up, right? So we had a lot of crazy stocks in play, right? We had stocks like uh, Holo, H-O-L-O. Holo is the one that started everything. It went from $2 to $40 and back down to $22. That ignited HKIT that went from um, 50 cents seven dollars and fifty cents and back down it ignited bets which went from a dollar eighty to four to two this stock hollow started everything so now what ended up happening is because hollow went crazy everyone is always looking for the next one right because what ends up happening is this is a typical sector play sympathy play that we've been teaching for a very very long time right so what ends up happening is people that missed hollow are like, all right, the Chinese theme is hot, the Chinese theme is hot, the Chinese theme is hot, the next Chinese stock that I find, I'm gonna look to buy it, right? So what ends up happening is then HKIT shows up and it goes from one to seven, and then it fails, okay? So as each day passes, guys, this is a very, very important lesson, so pay attention. As each day passes, the theme gets weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker, okay? So because the theme is getting weaker and weaker and weaker, today is day three of the, day three of the theme, right? So today we have stocks like Top that are going crazy. And as you guys remember, Top was previously my biggest losing trade that I've ever had. So I have already shell-shocked from this ticker a little bit. But the point is, guys, the point is that we are entering day three of these themes. And oftentimes after day three, the theme is not as strong. Notice that on day two of the theme, right, HKIT was the day after hollow, the day after it failed the same day. So now we're on day three of the Chinese theme on top. So I have a feeling that this Chinese stock top, because it's day three of the sector theme, okay, not day three of the stock, but day three of the sector theme, I think that there's probably going to be a very, very high probability that this stock pulls back at some point today. Does that mean short of pre-market and hope? No. But what I'm going to wait for is I'm going to wait for some sort of confirmations, ideally the whole and half dollar marks. So no point in making a plan right now. Just got to wait and see what it does. But as you can see, HKIT failed. The second day of these runners failed. So today is day three of these runs. It's the same thing as MLGO, right? Do you guys remember MLGO from yesterday? MLGO ran because it was a Chinese stock from 60 cents to $1.70 and closed back down. So this tells me, guys, this tells me that the theme of the Chinese stocks potentially, potentially is now starting to change, right? So I'll have this top on radar. Uh, I don't know if and when I'm going to trade it. The locates were very, very, very cheap today. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of where my mindset is for that. Aside from that, there's a lot of stocks. See, like this is a potential death candle now. So I don't know. I'll think about it. Maybe if it bounces back up, I'll take a starter short. But you guys understand what I'm saying right now. You guys understand the thought process is that the first day of a sector run is always the strongest. The second day of a sector run is weaker than the first day. The third day of a sector run is even weaker than the second day, which is already weaker than the first day. Okay. So because of that, because of that, I am thinking, I am anticipating, I am assuming that top, if and when it does confirm, right? It may confirm 650, it may confirm seven, I don't know. If and when it does confirm, I may have a potential trade on. And you can already see that towards the half dollar mark of 750, it's giving it some resistance. So it looks like whole and half dollar marks will be very, very key on this stock later today. So that's something to pay attention to is keep in mind the whole and half dollar uh, points on these stocks. And I'm not going to chase this down. I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to try to uh, catch the top, catch the bottom. This thing's up 115%. So I got plenty of room to make money if and when um, 
it does have its backside removed. So let me start to make the watches. So as you guys know, the way that I build the watches, so I always build the previous day's watches first, and there was no watch list yesterday because uh, I was not here. So I'm gonna kind of go to uh, Tom's watch list and I'm gonna kind of go through the tickers from yesterday. So HKIT, HKIT looking for a bounce towards 350, four, 450. Stock has wide range, so have to use less size. Looking for a bounce toward 350, four, 450 to short. Stock has wide range, so must use less size. MLGO, so MLGO, bounce towards red to green, 105, 115, 125. 105, 115, 125, lines too short. CCTG, this one I'll be looking for a bounce towards five. I'll say five, six, and 630. CCTG, looking for a bounce or five, six, 630 to short. SXTC, again, I'm looking at all the stocks from yesterday. SXTC, maybe 250 line, 270 line, three. BETS, again, I'm going through them one by one from yesterday. 350, and I would say four. Uh, today we have top, so top. Today is day three of the China theme. Day one was hollow, day two was HKIT, and day three is top. As each day passes, as each day passes, the theme gets weaker and weaker and weaker. Top is trading high volume right now. So I don't think it is a short yet, but if this stock ends up failing and failing to rebound, I can look for a scalp short only, for a scalp short only because the themes are getting weaker. I lack. I lack looking for a bounce toward one, 120, and 140. That's why I already. Same thing as yesterday, $5, 556. Check OKYO. OKYO, yeah, maybe towards $2. TCVP, yeah, TCVP pop towards VWAP, should be good. So a lot on radar today, guys, a lot on radar. Pretty much one of those days where just set your fantasy orders and wait, right? Lots on radar today. Hot on radar. I'm gonna put the watch this away now and then just kind of focus. So top, I don't know if I'm gonna take any trades right out of the open just because it's just a little bit sketchy and I have a little bit of PTSD from it. So I'll kind of just wait till I see some sort of confirmations, ideally.
Reminder guys, next week is Valentine's Day. So if you haven't gotten your girl, your side chick, your significant other something, do something about that. What am I doing? Flowers. Same shit as usual, right? Well, my big thing is guys, I write like cards. I write her like a lot of cards, like a little bit more personal. So like I get her nice flowers and I write her like a nice card. You are lucky, Carlos. You are lucky, my friend. And all these like florists, they jack up the prices during Valentine's Day. Normally, let's say a rose is $3 a stem, they charge $7 a stem during Valentine's Day. Maybe you guys watched the uh, Tucker Carlson, uh, Vladimir Putin. I have not watched it yet. Putin is more sensible than the mainstream media makes him out to be. Yeah, of course. It's fake news for a reason, right? So coming into today, guys, we got about 12 minutes till the market opens. Remind everyone that I'm not a financial advisor. It's not meant to be financial advice. Everything I say or do is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Trading is risky. You have to be prepared to lose your money trading. And it's not meant to copy or replicate any of my trades. It's more meant to look over the shoulders as I trade every single day. Yeah, 100 million views in seven hours. It's probably going to be like the most watched interview in history. Couple questions. What is the lowest float that you'd ever trade? What is the ideal flow? Well, I'm ideally looking for floats that are above 10 million. I do sometimes trade lower floats under 10 million. And if I do trade those lower floats under 10 million, it's with significantly less size. So now that hollow is broken on day three with tons of meat on the bone, why aren't you interested in shorting it? It's because if you look at hollow yesterday, guys, it ran from 19 to 35 in like five minutes, 10, 15 minutes. So chances are that it could easily, easily, easily run back to 30 or 35. So it's not enough high probability. For you. If it gapped up and it had like some resistance, yeah, but like the stock trades th so thin that I could turn around, it could be 15. I could turn around, it could be 35. I'd rather be late than early, you know? So 720 had a little bit of a seller there. But I took a small 1,000 share starter on top. Again, I'm not going to go heavy yet. Heavy for me would be 20, 30,000 shares. I'm just going to look to scalp it for now. I saw that seller at 720, so I just jumped in front of him. But again, I'm not trying to be here with a partial position. I'm trying to uh, wait and get a better entry. We'll cover this on scalp. Have to assume that this is gonna bounce at some point. But for now, I just covered half 70s. So I just took that thousand shares. I covered it, just kind of reset a little bit. I saw that 720 seller, so I jumped in front of him. But uh, I'm still kind of waiting. I'd rather be a little bit late to the party than early. So if it tanks, it tanks, but I'll be looking out for a bounce. So, so far, failing. Gonna cover the last bit I have. So cover the last bit. Maybe a little bit too early. But that's fine. So top, we'll be watching a bounce to short. Be watching top for a bounce to short slowly. I got a short there 70. So I got that short towards VWAP just a little bit, but it looks like it's failing already. So I want to see if I can get an ad or something. Well, it does look like it's failing, but I don't have a too big of a position yet. And I don't want to get like so insanely aggressive, like so early, you know? So I don't know yet. I don't want to get too heavy yet, just in case it bounces. <laughs> Took another ad there in the 70s. 
but I want to be extra cautious. It's not heavy yet. Not heavy yet. I still think that this could easily ramp back up. Could easily ramp back up. 680s. Oh yeah, let's see. 690s. A little add there, 688. Top. Okay, so it looks like it's failing. I'm trying to get some more added on top because it looks like it's failing there. Definitely looks like a fail. Got the rest of my fill 688. I'm in about half size right now. Still don't trust it, still don't trust it. Want to see some sort of death candle. Ideally, what signal I would need is I would need it to be under 650s. 7s now. Waiting to see if 7 rejects. I'm trying to add here on that death candle. So far, potential stuff candle, but it's not failing as fast as I thought it would. So if we break out here, right? If we break the 720s, I'll just probably trim some. That way I could uh, <clears throat> reassess. But I don't want to see, I don't want to see a death candle and a reclaim, right? So it's kind of strong here. So I might just cover my ad. <clears throat> well, it looks a little bit strong here, guys. <clears throat> so I'm gonna trim the ad. So I covered out some of the ad that I had just in case it likes to ramp. If it fails, which it looks like it's failing, I'll add it back. So this could easily keep going. I just want to protect myself a little bit. Okay, so good cover on some. So getting that 740 line now to re-add a little bit. <clears throat> so re-add it on that resistance now. Better entry. It kind of looks like a fail, to be honest. Okay, so ramping up. Might have to cover that ad again. <clears throat> okay, another fail. That looks like a fail to me. So I added on that fail. Added. So that's a high of the day fail right now. Money flow into INBS. So we're starting to get a new stock taking money flow, which is good. So I see a death candle here, guys. I see a death candle. So I'm reacting off that death candle. So I would need to see at least a 676 confirmation. Right now we have IMBS taking the money flow. So that's gonna help our trade. So top, IMBS money flow, money flow IMBS is gonna help our trade. Added more top into this weakness. 650 will confirm it. Looking for that 650 melt here, guys. Looking for the 650 melt. Reminding myself this is day three of the China place. IMBS is the new money flow. So hopefully IMBS takes money out of this. Once again, 650 confirmation is what I'm looking for. It's looking like it's gonna come. Watching, see if I can get an ad. 650 breaks. So watching that 650 break for an ad. So far, double top at the high of the day. Death candle. So it has all the signals. And on top of that, there's a new hot stock moving. So that new hot stock should take attention off of this. Six fifty is my ad spot. 
So just as a recap, I took an ad here at the 750 line. When it death candled, I added. I added on the death candle confirmation. Now I'm just looking for the 650 half dollar confirmation to add, and then we should see a move towards low of the day. Remember, this stock trades full and half dollars very, very well. So we gotta watch seven, 650, et cetera. But as of now, I'm looking to add on the 650 line if I get it. So 650 watching, hand on the trigger. 650. Added 650. Low of the day, 630. 630, come on. Come on. 630. Come on. Let's get a halt down. Let's get a halt down. Halting down. Halting down. Covered some into the halt down, 613. That's what I call a home run. That's what I call a home run. Fuck yeah. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Let's go. That is, I don't know about you guys, but that is picture perfect to me. Um, I don't know what else to say on that one, guys. 599 indication, 599 indication. Let's draw our support lines. The trade's not over, guys. The trade is not over. Draw our support lines, 580. 580s. So next cover zone is 580s. All right, still got some. I wish I had more size. God damn. God damn. Okay. No problem. No problem. Why am I complaining? Why am I complaining? Why am I complaining? Remember when I started this, guys? Remember when I started this? I was like, the only thing that's kind of sketching me out about top is that there's no other money flow on a stock. Well, IMBS, the moment IMBS got money flow, right? That was at what the candle is, at 9.40 a.m. 9.40 a.m., do you see a coincidence here? Do you see a coincidence here? The moment that IMBS got money flow, money flow exited, money flow exited. So let's just recap this chart real quick, guys. I took a starter, 1,000 shares, covered the dip. Looking for that VWAP rejection, when it didn't reject VWAP and ended up breaking the high of the day, I covered out. Started to reshort at the resistance of 750. When we got the high of the day rejection, death candle added, added, added on 650 half dollar fail, and boom, cover some on the way. So now, again, the support is in the 580s, $6 area. So I'm gonna look to cover some as support and then look to reshort it on a bounce. Does that make sense? Does that make sense so far? So I want to lock in some gains on the dip and then reshort it, risking those gains on a bounce. Does that make sense? And as I mentioned at the beginning of this, uh, of this live trade, guys, what day of the sector move are we on? As each day passes, the sectors get weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. Today was day three of the sector, right? Day three of the sector. This is textbook, guys. Textbook MIC strategy. Textbook. So I'm going to be on the dip to cover some as support. Okay, open. We'll leave. Covered some on the dip. I was not expecting that. 580s hit, 580s hit. I covered some at what? 603 I got. You see that 580, 580 line? I got pretty good cover there, sixes. Okay. 
93 covered more. This is support, guys. This is support. I should be covering more here at support. I'm going to try to cover some more at support. When the support comes, I want to cover it, which is what I'm doing. I'll be back on the bounce. Oh, wow. So I got a pretty good cover there. 601. Holy. I didn't even notice I covered there. Wow. Great. Fantastic. Let's reshort this. 622 reshorting. Wow. Amazing cover. So far, so good. 627 covered. I mean, shorted more. Oops. 630. Shorted more. Shorted more. 45. I'm reshorting the bounce, guys. When I covered at six, I'm reshorting it. So that's why I covered at six to reshort the pop. To reshort the pop. I'll keep reshorting the pops, guys. I'm gonna keep reshorting the pops. Now I locked in a bunch of gains on the dip. I locked in a bunch of gains on the dip at support, like I mentioned. Now I'm riding the house's money. And as IMBS continues to take money flow, I'll feel more confident. So I want IMBS to keep going as high as possible, to take as much money flow as possible. This is why we always lock in gains on dips, guys. We lock in gains on dips in case something goes wrong. Covered some of that ad 618. So just trimmed some of those ads to be able to maybe get a better entry. But I'm ultimately looking for a low of the day retest. So I have locked in gains on the dips and now I'm just kind of pressing for more if I can get it. I'm pressing for more if I can get it. Uh, you avoid IMBS from the watches. To be honest, guys, if the top wasn't moving, I would have traded it. I just wanted to focus all my attention on top and it kind of saved me. It kind of saved me. Now I have locked in gains, guys, and I'm just risking some of my locked in gains to push this trade even bigger. IMBS, the key area I see, guys, is 380s for a fade. Top, fail. Covered some more, 610. So you see what I'm doing, guys? You see what I'm doing? I'm covering the dips to re-add the bounces. I'm covering the dips to re-add the bounces. 607, covered more. Six oh three, cover more. So you see what I did there, guys? You see what I did? I covered the dip to re-add the bounce. And now I covered those. Now, what do you think I'm gonna do again if it bounces? What do you think I'm gonna do again? I'm gonna reshort the bounce. So either A, it dips under six for more, or B, I reshort the bounce. So now I'm just adding gains and adding gains and adding gains now. And because I locked in gains on the dip, it allows me to be significantly more patient, guys. Got an ad there, 20. Got an ad, 24, partial fill. What about to the well too many times? I mean, yes, it's possible. If it starts to reclaim a little bit, I will, you know, stop recycling. But until I get some sort of signal that uh, 
until I get some sort of like notable signal that this is starting to hold a trend, I'm just gonna keep hitting this shit. I'm just gonna keep hitting this shit. So I wanna see $6 break here, guys. Okay, let's get that low of the day retest. Come on. That's what I'm talking about, dude. That is exactly what I'm talking about. Come on. That is what I'm talking about, baby. Still not over yet. Still not over yet. Remember to cover some, cover some, cover some. I covered some to protect myself. Why? The same thing that happened here, guys, could happen there. The same thing. I protect myself, protect myself. I am protecting myself. You know what's gonna happen, right? I'm gonna cover and then the bottom's gonna fall out. That's what's gonna happen, right? That's what's gonna happen. That's the textbook Alex indicator. So like I said, guys, I covered some on the dip at 570s. And once again, I'm gonna do the same thing over if we get a bounce. IMBS continuing up, that's helping. We want IMBS to bounce as much as possible, guys, to take the money flow away. Very, very good covers on the dip there, guys. Got another ad there. Oh, didn't fill yet. Got an ad there. That's why I locked in. I locked some in. Now, anyone that didn't lock in on the dip is now covering into this bounce. IMBS continues. Keep going. Please keep going. Please keep going. So this is a perfect uh, setup, guys, because INBS is taking the money flow. If top was the singular stock moving today, it'd be a lot tougher to trade. But because INBS is taking the money flow, it is helping a lot. So I'm looking for another dip to cover out of some of this top. Hey guys, I'm pretty much all out here on top on this dip to six. I'm gonna take the money and run. I'm gonna take the money and run here. So let me see. Locked in. One second, let me just take a screenshot. Locked in 22700 dollars baby. Let's go. Let's go. Today is let's go. 22,713.72. Oh my God, I'm telling you guys, the Alex indicator is real. So this is where I'm at so far for the month, guys. $32,000. So pretty solid trading today. I mean, like, I would say I did everything right with the sizing, with the patience. The only thing I did wrong is maybe not being a little bit more patient, right? So that's it for me, guys. Done trading in about 30 minutes today. It is a textbook MIC trade. And this is a very good lesson on the sympathy plays and the days of the sector. This was the final day of the sector. So I went in a little bit heavier, right? Notice on day one of the sector, I'm not really doing that. I'm waiting for the sector to weaken up and then I'm doing it. That's it guys, calling a day here. Really appreciate you and thanks.